kept my nose clean and uh, took care of those relationships that later on they would pay off. Um, and in the meantime, was just taking acting classes, which led me to um, go on um, to reality TV. So I did like a season of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I was just like, okay, well, this doesn't really display my talent. You know what I mean? So that was a chapter that closed. And I went on to meeting this amazing woman named Winston Sinclair, who is an awesome casting director in Atlanta. She actually casted for so many amazing award-winning films. Uh, one is called Juice, and so, uh, which starred Tupac Shakur. So I met this lady, uh, went into her office for five minutes and fell in love with this painting that she had of her and Tupac. And I was like, listen, forget uh, our meeting. Like, I love Tupac. How did, you know, how was that meeting Tupac? And, you know, working with him, she was like, actually, he was one of my mentees. Uh, he was a wonder to work with. He was so brilliant, so talented. Um, and we went on to have this amazing conversation about Tupac Shakur. And I left her office, went to an inter a radio interview. Uh, fast forward 10 months later, she texted me and was like, hey, I have this amazing, incredible opportunity for you to audition for the All Eyes on Me film. Are you interested? Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, wait a minute. Like, of course I'm interested. Like, here I am, this girl who just moved to Atlanta with a dream and found myself in reality TV just for a season. Didn't really, it wasn't really for me. It wasn't the right fit for me and was dying to get into the film industry, but just didn't have the right contacts or, you know, didn't, ha didn't know how to. Mm -hmm. um, and this one lady came out, uh, Winston Sinclair, she came around and honestly, she just changed the whole trajectory of my life with this opportunity. So mm -hmm. All Eyes on Me came out in 2017. It was released by Lionsgate Film and Code Black Entertainment, um, produced by LT Hutton. Um, also uh, directed by the amazing Benny Boom. And um, that cast was just incredible to work with as well. So after the release of that in 2017, I started getting offers to do other films as well. So after that, <laughs> I just ended up going into, um, you might have seen me on shows like Insatiable, which is on Netflix, uh, Bigger, which is on BET. Um, Recently, like I said, we just released Secret Society, which is doing really well. Hi, guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you all so much. I'm like reading the comments as well. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're actually filming part two in, at the top of 2022. So I'm just so excited to be working. And um, really, things are real. The ball is really rolling. So I feel blessed. That was like the the shortest summary yeah. of so much i love that i love that so there's so much i'm going to dissect from that and the first thing is you know i've got to ask because you said it what music videos have you been in oh my god let me go back <laughs> you need to know spill the tea Sheesh. uh okay well there was a song that trey songs and uh ti did call um ladies in the drinks uh okay. t pain up down you're uh, up down hey what was that yeah. like like that um, Gucci man. Uh, there are so many videos. I can't remember all the titles, but I did over like 25 That's music amazing. videos. I worked with pretty much every artist that was hot at the time. I, I worked with them. Um, and like I said, for me, acting was always, doing the videos was always about meeting the directors, forming a relationship with them. Um, and being maintaining professionalism on set because later on, you know, I I looked at people like Lauren London and other actresses that this actually this route actually worked out for, and so mm -hmm. a lot of the actresses that we know now and actors started off doing music videos as well. Um, mm -hmm. Even Boris Kojo, I noticed that he was in a TLC video back in the day. So there was just so many people mm -hmm. that was like, well, you know, this was a way to get my feet wet, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm. And just just on the up down music video because that's such a, a banger. What was it like? <laughs> can you remember what, what it was like? So obviously, that came out a while ago, but what yeah. was it like on shooting that that video? It was fun. I yeah. remember that day was very hot. Um, I got the uh, the box braids, the poetic justice box braids that day, and I was supposed to be playing Daishiki from like a old film back in the day, old classic, and. Um, a friend of mine, actually Brittany Hall, she's an amazing actress now. She played uh, Janet Jackson. And so it was just pretty much taking 
classic films from the 90s that we grew up in and like meshing it all in one video and uh, giving you guys that nostalgic feel of like the 90s cookout party mm -hmm. type of vibe. So it was really fun. It was really fun. Uh, T-Pain was really cool. Um, the director, all of the people that participated in this project were really awesome to work with. Amazing. And just on that, because you said a really valid thing about um, your purpose in doing music videos was to get into acting. Now, I feel like sometimes the code, the term, sorry, video vixen doesn't yes. have a positive connotation to it because, you know, it, it gives it gives people that thought that, you know, if you're a video vixen, you know, you're just there showing titties and ass and blah, blah, blah. So what what secret, what is what is your secret, would you say, yeah. um, with being able to kind of not fall? <laughs> under that video vixen image and actually be able to convert that to right. your, your dream of acting well for me um i always say this right like monica Lewinsky was working at the white house wearing a three-piece suit and was still doing unprofessional mm -hmm. things you know what i'm saying and so it's not the the role that you have is what you do with it mm -hmm. and i think that that the co negative connotation that's associated with girls who've done music videos is primarily directed to uh, a lot of behavior that happens on these sets. So, you know, I've seen people come to the set with the goal of like getting a rapper's number or getting a director's number or like doing unprofessional things, you know? And for me, I was always, it was always important for me to be the first one there and the last person to leave and to never fraternize and to never mess with any of the artists or the directors because you have to keep your nose clean as a, especially as a woman, mm -hmm. you walk into a room and you look a certain way, people already are thinking, they already have preconceived notions of who you are. They sexualize it, it. It, Yeah, of course mm -hmm. they sexualize you and it's totally mm -hmm. up to you to break that barrier. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so for me, like I said, um, there were a lot of, um, there were a lot of instances where I remember I was tested in those in those areas and I just mm -hmm. always kept my nose clean, I always said, Hey, I'm here to work, you know? And you don't have to be like a stuck up girl about it. You know, there's ways of just moving around, you know, and this is an industry full of men and women who um, are very talented and very professional. And I feel like if you use it as an opportunity as a stepping stone, it can work out for you. Um, and the girls that I used to see fraternizing and doing all that stuff on set, I don't see them anymore. I don't see them doing anything at all anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, I have to say, that's some real female hush of shit. Because I'll be honest, yeah. I don't know how I would be able to always be that strong, especially when someone like Trey Songs, if he's sticking yeah, it. How these, are, these are, the <laughs> what I was like, these are, these are people just like yeah. you and I. You know what I mean? And so how you how you carry yourself is what's going to get you into the next level, the next mm -hmm. door. And I felt like if I was a girl that was just always on set with a goal in mind of like dating the hottest R&B or the hottest rapper at the time, I wouldn't be here talking to you. You know what I mean? I wouldn't mm -hmm. have I wouldn't have gone into film. Um, like I said, I've done a lot of work with Benny Boom. Mm -hmm. What's up, LT? So listen real quick right i want to give a huge shout out to lt hutton because when i walked into just to go off course real quick but when i walked into that audition room for all eyes on me mm -hmm. i was i had no management i had no agents i didn't know anything about what a publicist was mm -hmm. all i was i was this girl who was just trying to break into the acting and film industry mm -hmm. and um, I had so many things against me, you know what I mean? Like one thing about reality TV that I, I didn't really like was that you are a typecast based mm -hmm. on how you look and there's a storyline that has to sell for entertainment mm -hmm. purposes. And, but your real name is being used. Mm -hmm. So it's very much like acting in a series. However, mm -hmm. I didn't have a character name. My character name was Erica mm -hmm. P. Yeah. And so people felt like that's who I was. That's who I embodied. So when I walked into this audition room, I already felt that like the odds were just like people were just kind of like, why is she here? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when I delivered and I walked out of that room, LT was like, hold up. Like that girl 
she has something special. She has something different to offer. He didn't listen to what the naysayers were saying, and he really went to bat for me. And I really appreciate him. He was so professional. Mm -hmm. um, and usually you don't get that in this industry. So I just really want everyone to follow LT Hutton. He made sure that um, we had a seat at the table. You know, as as African American people, a lot of times when we're mm -hmm at the table in the film industry, we're not, we don't have control over what happens. This mm -hmm. man took years, developed this script, developed this story. He dealt with the backlash very well. And he made sure that people who were forgotten had an opportunity to shine. And so I just really thank him for that. Him, Winston Sinclair, Benny Boom, they did an incredible job. Um, rest in peace to Feeney Shakur, who was also a part of the project as well in the, um, pre-production um, stages, but you just don't get that. And like I said, Benny Boom, I had worked with him on sets, video sets before. If I had been doing things that were unprofessional, I would have never even gotten the invite to that mm -hmm. room. So I just mm -hmm. want to say thank you guys for that. Um, That's but, but yeah, back to reality TV, you know, it just gives you this, um, you, you find yourself always explaining like, this is who I am, this is who I am. And so, mm -hmm. A lot of my mentors were like, stop telling people who you are and show us who you are mm -hmm. by what you're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was my job to continuously put out good work um, and to continuously, you know, train. And like for me as an actress, a lot of times people get lucky and find themselves in this field. I've trained for this, you know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. I've invested money that I didn't have <laughs> into the best coaches that I could find in Atlanta um, and, you know, invested in my headshots, always, you know, just networking with the people across from me. Cause a lot of times, and if there's any actors in this room right now or any aspiring actors, it's very important that a lot of times we try to reach up, we try to reach out to the hottest actors or the hottest directors, the people who are grinding with you, to your left and to your right, your friends, your peers, those are gonna be the people that you really should be networking with, right? Because in the next 10, 15, 20 years, you guys are gonna be the next generation of A-list actors, directors, producers, writers, or whatever. And so it's just very important to cross network with your peers um, and to constantly create, you know, constantly be writing, constantly be creating, um, especially in the, the the um the environment that we're in now everything's digital you have the opportunity to create content and put it out you no longer have to wait for this huge studio to give you that the gold or the green light so um it's a really great space for creatives in general i hope everyone in the comments is taking notes because you're dropping some gems <laughs> yeah. so one thing i want to talk about and i want to touch on in this interview is your relationship with Ray now because yes. on set, on the screen, you know, you guys are inseparable. You've got such good chemistry. For What's sure. it like off set? Man, when I first met Raina, we actually had a FaceTime call mm -hmm. and we were supposed to be talking about the script and like, <laughs> you know, let's read the script and let's go over these scenes together. We literally sat for hours just talking about, you know, our, road to where we are we had so much in common we had a lot of the same obstacles uh we both were women who survived many things like domestic violence and so on and so forth without getting too deep into that but i felt like us connecting as women is why you guys were able to see the chemistry that you saw on screen and even in real life we're great friends like we always see each other i'm always in miami when i'm in miami we're hanging out when she comes to atlanta we hang out our kids our my daughter her daughter they're like great friends so it was just it honestly it was like a family every single person a part of the project is someone who i really really uh respect and like i said secret side secret society was just it was divinely put together. I feel like God put this whole thing together because here we are in a pandemic filming this incredible story. And a lot of the locations that we didn't have um, license to film, for some reason, we just didn't have any hiccups at all. There was supposed to be this huge hurricane that was supposed to come and like wipe out one of our location sets. 
Um, I don't know if you guys remember the scene where we did, uh, we were on the floating mansion. That oh, yeah. beautiful, wasn't that beautiful? Oh so, my, so beautiful. So, oh my God. So there was going to be this huge um, hurricane that came that day. And we were like, just praying and crossing our fingers. It didn't happen because.